Chapter 1. A Star is Born On a chilly morning of March 14, 1879, the quaint city of Ulm, nestled in the kingdom of W. Wartenberg in the German Empire, bore witness to the birth of a child destined to illuminate the world of science. This child, born to Hermann and Pauline Einstein, was christened Albert. The Einsteins were a tight-knit Jewish family. Hermann, a bookish and gentle-mannered man, was an engineer and salesman, while Pauline, the daughter of a wealthy grain merchant, was a talented musician. Their home was filled with books, music, and the spirit of intellectual inquiry, providing an ideal environment for young Albert to cultivate his innate curiosity. From his earliest days, Albert was a contemplative child. Legends of his late speech development abound, though many have been embellished over time. One such tale suggests that Albert didn't speak until he was four, and when he did, it was to comment on the taste of the soup his mother had made. Surprised, his parents asked why he hadn't spoken until then, to which he reputedly replied, until now, everything was in order. Whether or not these tales hold water, they paint a picture of a child who observed the world differently, who processed information in his unique way, and who waited for the right moment to express himself. His younger sister, Maja, who was born two years after him, wrote in her memoirs about her famous brother's penchant for building card houses and playing the violin. Even in these simple childhood games and activities, a glimpse of Albert's future genius could be discerned. The city of Ulm, with its towering cathedral and the meandering Danube River, was the backdrop for Albert's initial years. As the boy grew and began to explore his surroundings, he would often find himself gazing at the sky, the stars, and the vastness of space perhaps pondering questions that would have later form the foundation of his revolutionary theories. Though it would be years before the world would recognize the genius of Albert Einstein, the foundations of his curiosity, brilliance, and distinct perspective on the world were evident in the early. Formative years in Ulm. The star, though yet to shine its brightest, was certainly born. Chapter 2. Munich and Early Education In 1880, when Albert, barely a year old, the Einstein family bid farewell to the city of Ulm and relocated to Munich, the bustling capital of Bavaria. Hermann, always the entrepreneur, teamed up with his brother Jacob to establish an electrical engineering company named Einstein and CI. Their venture thrived on manufacturing electrical equipment, which, at the close of the 19th century, was in high demand due to the electrification wave sweeping through Europe. The Einstein household in Munich was a haven for intellectual growth. Surrounded by his father's engineering work and his mother's love for music, young Albert, found himself immersed in an environment where both art and science coexisted harmoniously. This duality of interests would remain a constant throughout his life, with Einstein often turning to his beloved violin during moments of deep contemplation or frustration. However, his academic journey wasn't without its struggles. Enrolling at the Leuitpold Gymnasium, Albert encountered the Prussian education system, known for its strict regimen and rigid curriculum. The system emphasized rote learning and discipline, stifling the creativity of a young mind that thrived on questioning and understanding the while behind things. Often, young Einstein found himself at odds with his teachers, who mistook his deep reflections for daydreaming and his thirst for knowledge as rebelliousness. Yet, 
there were moments of enlightenment during these years. Max Talmud, Mood, Jewish medical student and friend of the family, introduced ten-year-old Albert to key texts in science and philosophy. Over weekly dinner visits, Talmud and Einstein delved deep into discussions on these subjects. These interactions ignited a spark in Albert, and he began to voraciously consume more advanced topics, including mathematics and physics. Despite the constraints of formal schooling, Einstein's insatiable curiosity led him to embark on a self-guided educational journey. From the age of 12, he began exploring the wonders of Euclidean geometry and encountered the concept of deductive reasoning. It wasn't long before he was introduced to Immanuel Kant's critique of pure reason, and though the dense philosophical text was challenging, it opened Albert's eyes to new ways of understanding the world. His years in Munich, like while marked by challenges within the formal education system, laid the groundwork for Einstein's unique way of thinking. He emerged not as a product of the system, but in spite of it, with an unyielding spirit and an ever-burning flame of curiosity. Chapter 3 The Patent Office and the Annus Mirabilis As the dawn of the twentieth century approached, a young Albert Einstein, fresh from his studies at the Zurich Polytechnic, found himself at a crossroads. Though his academic prowess was evident, his nonconformist attitude during his student years didn't endear him to many of his professors. The coveted academic positions he sought remained elusive, leaving Einstein facing a period of uncertainty and professional stagnation. It was during these challenging times that Einstein, in a twist of fate, landed a position as a technical assistant at the Federal Patent Office in Bern, Switzerland. The year was 1902, and while the position wasn't directly in line with his academic ambitions, it provided him with a stable income and a chance to start a family with. Maleva Marie, his fellow student and love. The patent office, WISIS, endless stream of inventions and innovations, became an unlikely crucible for Einstein's genius. Far from the academic pressures and the dogmatic rigidity he had encountered earlier, the daily task of examining patent applications required a keen analytical mind. Einstein had to visualize the working of devices and innovations, often based solely on textual descriptions. This exercise of mentally running experiments honed his ability to think in abstracts and imagine concepts far removed from tangible reality. While the day's work kept him occupied, the evenings and weekends were Einstein's own. He had a small group of friends, later famously dubbed the Olympia Academy, with whom he discussed and debated ideas ranging from physics to philosophy. The intellectual camaraderie of this group became an essential counterpoint to Einstein's solitary ruminations. 1905, a year that would go down in history as Einstein's Annus Mirabilis, or Miracle Year, began unassumingly. But behind the scenes, Einstein was brewing a storm. Over this year, Ihr Pjöbl, the first paper delved into the photoelectric effect, proposing the radical idea that light could be thought of as packets of energy called quanta. This work would later form a cornerstone of quantum mechanics and earn him the Nobel Prize in Physics in 1921. The second paper examined Brownian motion, providing empirical support for the existence of atoms and molecules, something that was still a matter of debate among scientists. The third introduced the special theory of relativity, challenging traditional notions of space and time. The final paper discussed the equivalence of mass and energy, further expanding on the ideas introduced in the third paper. These papers weren't just evolutionary steps in physics, they were revolutionary, fundamentally changing the direction of the field. The world of science, 
Munchens, initially been oblivious to the musings of a young patent clerk in Bern, suddenly sat up and took notice. The year 1905 closed, leaving behind an indelible mark on the annals of science. While Einstein's journey had only just begun, his Annus Mirabilis firmly established him as a force to reckon with, setting the stage for greater discoveries and challenges in the years to come. Chapter 4 General Relativity and Global Fame After the exhilarating achievements of his Annus Mirabilis, Einstein could have rested on his laurels. Instead, the promise of new horizons and unsolved cosmic puzzles beckoned him. While the special theory of relativity had addressed the symmetries of space and time in non-accelerating frames, the complexities of gravity, acceleration, and larger universal truths remained elusive. These challenges gave birth to a decade-long pursuit that would culminate in his magnum opus, the general theory of relativity. Relocating to the academic hub of Prague in 1911, Einstein delved deeper into the cosmos's fabric. His early thoughts revolved around the equivalence principle, the notion that gravitational and inertial forces are indistinguishable. Imagine being in a sealed room in outer space, he posited. If the room accelerates upward, the force you feel pressing you down is indistinguishable from the gravitational force you'd feel on Earth. With this kernel of an idea, Einstein began formulating a theory that would redefine our understanding of gravity. No longer was it to be seen as a force between masses as Sir Isaac Newton had proposed two centuries earlier. Instead, in Einstein's evolving view, massive objects like planets and stars would warp the very fabric of space-time around them, and objects moved within this curvature as if falling along the bent paths. But turning this groundbreaking concept into rigorous mathematics was no small feat. As he moved back to Zurich in 1912, Einstein collaborated with his friend Marcel Grossman, a mathematician. Together, they embarked on an arduous journey through the world of tensor calculus, the mathematical language capable of describing these intricate ideas. By 1915, amidst the tumultuous backdrop of World War II, Einstein's work reached its zenith. He presented the final form of his general theory of relativity to the Prussian Academy of Sciences. The equations described a universe in which space and time were intertwined, malleable, and sensitive to the presence of mass and energy. The real litmus test, however, lay in empirical validation. An opportunity presented itself with the solar eclipse of 1919. According to Einstein's theory, light from distant stars, when passing close to the sun, should bend due to the sun's gravitational field. Sir Arthur Eddington, an English astrophysicist, led an expedition to the island of Pr Unsipe off the coast of Africa to observe and verify this prediction. The results were groundbreaking. The measurements matched Einstein's predictions closely, providing the first experimental validation of general relativity. News of this confirmation spread rapidly. Newspapers around the world heralded the success of Einstein's theory with headlines like Revolution in Science New Theory of the Universe, Newtonian Ideas Overthrown. Almost overnight, Albert Einstein, the once obscure patent clerk, became a household name, his iconic image synonymous with genius. Universities and institutes across the globe vied for his attention and expertise. While the world celebrated the rise of a new star in the scientific firmament, Einstein remained characteristically humble.
continuing his relentless pursuit of understanding the universe's mysteries. But with the success of the general theory of relativity, he had not only reshaped the world of physics, but had also secured his place as one of history's most influential thinkers. Chapter 5 Berlin and Personal Struggles By 1914, the lure of Berlin's intellectual dynamism was hard to resist. The German capital stood at the crossroads of arts, sciences, and culture, home to luminaries such as Max Planck and Fritz Haber. Offered a prestigious post at the Prussian Academy of Sciences, with the added allure of a research-only position without any teaching obligations, Einstein was pulled back to his homeland. Berlin was not just a shift in geography, but also in Einstein's personal and professional life. The city's stimulating environment and its assembly of brilliant minds offered Einstein ample opportunities for collaboration and academic discourse. His interaction with eminent physicists and thinkers, like Max Planck, the father of quantum theory, would further shape his ideas and beliefs in the coming years. However, the same years that saw Einstein's meteoric rise to global fame were also marked by deep personal challenges. His marriage to Milaviva Marie, which had begun with shared dreams and passions at the Zurich Polytechnic, had grown strained. The couple's differences, both personal and intellectual, became increasingly pronounced amidst the backdrop of Berlin's bustling life. By 1919, Einstein and Mileva, with their two sons, Hans Albert and Eduard, decided to part ways. The divorce took an emotional toll on Einstein, who deeply missed his children and often wrote poignant letters to them. To add to the emotional turmoil, Europe was ravaged by World War I. Einstein, a pacifist at heart, was distraught by the destruction and loss of life. The war reshaped his political beliefs, and he began using his fame to advocate for disarmament and international cooperation. However, as the whims of war subsided and the horrors of the aftermath became evident, his stance evolved from strict pacifism to a more nuanced approach, advocating for armament in moderation to defend democracies from rising threats. Einstein's personal life found solace when he reconnected with Elsa L. Winthal, a first cousin whom he had known since childhood. The bond between them deepened leading to their marriage in 1919. Elsa, along with her two daughters from a previous marriage, Ilse and Margot, provided Einstein with the stability and affection that had been missing from his life. Professionally, while the validation of his general theory of relativity brought fame, it also brought challenges. The world of quantum mechanics which Einstein had helped birth with his paper on the photoelectric effect, began to grow. But as quantum theory evolved, Einstein found himself at odds with its probabilistic nature, famously stating, God does not play dice with the universe. The Berlin years, spanning from 1914 to 1933, were a tapestry of contrasts for Einstein. They saw him attain unparalleled academic heights, becoming the very symbol of genius in popular culture. Yet, there were also years of deep introspection, personal reconfigurations, and a grappling with the evolving landscape of physics. Berlin brought both the best and the most challenging episodes to Einstein's doorstep. But through every triumph and tribulation, Einstein continued his relentless pursuit of knowledge, driven by the same insatiable curiosity that had marked his days in Munich, Zurich, and Prague. Chapter 6 The Rise of Nazism and Move to America As the 1920s 
neared their close, the atmosphere in Berlin began to change. The vibrant, intellectual hub that had once welcomed thinkers, artists, and scientists from around the world was gradually overshadowed by dark political clouds. The Weimar Republic, though a time of cultural renaissance, was also marred by economic hardships, especially in the aftermath of the 1929 Wall Street crash. Hyperinflation, unemployment, and widespread discontent became fertile ground for extremist ideologies. At the forefront of this shift was the rise of Adolf Hitler's National Socialist German Workers' Party, better known as the Nazis. Their toxic mix of extreme nationalism, anti-communism, and virulent anti-Semitism found increasing support among a population seeking someone to blame for Germany's woes. For Einstein, I, permanent Jew, and an outspoken pacifist turned relativist, the writing was on the wall. His theories, especially the theory of relativity, were derided by the Nazi regime as Jewish physics, a term they used to dismiss the contributions of Jewish scientists. The Nazi's propaganda machine frequently targeted him, using his global fame against him, painting him as the epitome of the Jewish intellectual whom they despised. By 1933, when Hitler was appointed Chancellor of Germany, the threats against Einstein became more direct and pronounced. His property was seized, and his books were among those thrown into the flames during the infamous book burnings. Being outside of Germany during Hitler's rise to power, Einstein wisely decided not to return to a homeland that had turned so hostile. He was resigned from the Prussian Academy of Sciences in a poignant letter, criticizing the institution for not standing up against the infringement of academic freedom. It was against this tumultuous backdrop that the United States of America, a nation built on ideals of freedom and refugee, beckoned. Einstein was no stranger to the U. S having previously visited and given lectures at several universities. Recognizing the growing danger in Europe, he accepted a position at the newly formed Institute for Advanced Study in Princeton, New Jersey. Upon arriving in America in 1933, Einstein was quick to express his gratitude to a nation that offered sanctuary. Princeton became his home, and the Institute provided an environment where he could continue his scientific pursuits unfettered by the political upheavals of Europe. However, Einstein did not simply bury himself in academic work upon his move. He felt a deep moral responsibility to raise awareness about the Nazi menace and advocate for the rescue of Jewish refugees. With his characteristic passion, he lobbied for relaxed immigration rules helped establish the International Rescue Committee and used his influence to assist endangered scholars. But America wasn't just a refuge for Einstein. It was also a place of personal introspection. He observed the nation's struggles with its own racial inequalities, especially the systemic prejudice against African Americans. Connecting with leading figures of the civil rights movement, such as W. A. B. Dubois and Marian Anderson, Einstein used his platform to call for an end to racial segregation and discrimination. While Europe's tumult and the Holocaust would forever leave a scar on Einstein's heart, America offered him both sanctuary and a renewed purpose. As he sought to navigate his role in this new homeland, Einstein proved that he was not just a physicist in an ivory tower, but a global citizen deeply engaged with the challenges and responsibilities of his time. Chapter 7 The Quest for Unified Field Theory The quiet town of Princeton, with its tree-lined streets and esteemed academic history, 
seemed worlds away from the roiling turbulence of Europe. In this serene setting, Einstein began one of the most ambitious projects of his career, the search for a unified field theory. The 20th century witnessed tremendous leaps in our understanding of the universe. The quantum mechanics revolution had reshaped the microcosm, introducing a world of probabilities, wave functions, and particle dualities. On the grander scale, Einstein's own general relativity painted a picture of a cosmos where space and time were interwoven and shaped by mass and energy. Yet, a chasm remained. These two groundbreaking theories, though individually powerful, seem to speak different languages, presenting contrasting views of the universe. Einstein's quest was to bridge this gap. He envisioned a single, all-encompassing framework, or a unified field theory, that would seamlessly merge the forces of the universe. In essence, this theory aimed to describe all of the fundamental forces gravity, electromagnetism, and the nuclear forces within a singular mathematical tapestry. However, this quest was anything but straightforward. Quantum mechanics, Wickick's inherent unpredictability, seemed at odds with the smooth, deterministic nature of general relativity. Einstein's discomfort with the quantum realm was well known, leading to his famous statement, God does not play dice. Yet, the experimental successes of quantum physics were undeniable, making the task of unification even more challenging. Throughout the 1930s and 1940s, Einstein, assisted by a handful of collaborators like Walter Mayer and Peter Bergman, delved deeply into the world of complex mathematics, searching for equations that could encapsulate his vision. These explorations led him down many paths, from multidimensional spaces to new interpretations of the existing equations of physics. The scientific community watched with a mix of admiration and skepticism. Many of the younger generation of physicists, deeply entrenched in the quantum revolution, felt Einstein's quest was quixotic, perhaps even outdated. They admired his tenacity, but believed the true path forward lay in the burgeoning field of quantum field theory. Despite the challenges, Einstein remained undeterred. His correspondence from these years reflects a mind continuously probing, questioning, and refining. He engaged in famous debates, most notably with physicist Niels Bohr, about the nature of reality, determinism, and the role of the observer in quantum phenomena. However, as the years advanced, the unified field theory remained elusive. Einstein's notes and manuscripts from his later years at Princeton indicate both his deep passion for the quest and the mounting challenges he faced. The complexity of the mathematics and the evolving landscape of particle physics, with new particles being discovered, added layers of intricacy to his endeavor. By the time of his death in 1955, Einstein had not realized his dream of a unified field theory. Yet, his relentless pursuit left an indelible mark on theoretical physics. It prompted generations of physicists to tackle the problem, leading to the development of theories like string theory and loop quantum gravity. While the unified field theory remains one of the holy grails of physics, Einstein's journey towards it is a testament to his unyielding curiosity and the depth of his vision. In his quest, Wess laid the groundwork for future generations, challenging them to look beyond the established, to question, and to always seek a deeper understanding of our universe. Chapter 8, Final Years and Legacy 
As the world entered the post-war era, Albert Einstein, with his iconic wild hair and contemplative eyes, had already been deeply etched into the global consciousness as the embodiment of genius. Princeton became not just a workplace, but also a retreat, providing both solace and solitude for a mind that never ceased to wander the vast expanse of the cosmos. The Final Years In his Princeton home, 112 Mercer Street, the routines of Einstein's life took on a quiet predictability. Mornings were often dedicated to work, with hours spent in his study among papers scribbled with equations. Yet, there was also time for reflection, music, and walks. His love for the violin remained undiminished, with Mozart's pieces being his favorites. On solitary strolls around the town, he often engaged in deep thought, occasionally stopping to scribble notes. But the serenity of his personal life contrasted sharply with the global situation. The aftermath of World War II brought about the Cold War era, the nuclear arms race, and mounting political tensions. Having witnessed the destructive potential of atomic energy in Hiroshima and Nagasaki, Einstein grappled with a moral dilemma. His early work had indirectly paved the way for atomic research. Now, the father of relativity became a voice for disarmament and peaceful uses of atomic energy. Health issues began to cast a shadow in the early 1950s. Despite being resilient for most of his life, Age and the intensity of his intellectual pursuits began to take their toll. By 1955, complications arising from an abdominal aortic aneurysm became acute. On April 18, 1955, the world bid farewell to one of its brightest minds. Einstein passed away in Princeton Hospital, leaving behind unfinished work on his desk and a universe full of ideas that would continue to inspire. Legacy Albert Einstein's legacy extends beyond the realms of science. While the theories of relativity transformed our understanding of space, time, and the universe, his contributions to quantum physics laid the groundwork for much of modern technology, from lasers to semiconductors. His personal writings, letters, and speeches reflect a philosopher-scientist deeply concerned with humanity's future. Advocating for civil rights, Zionism, internationalism, and education, Einstein used his global stature to address some of the pressing issues of his time. Educational institutions worldwide continue to uphold Einstein as a symbol of curiosity and the relentless quest for knowledge. The Albert Einstein Archives at the Hebrew University of Jerusalem, which he helped found and to which he bequeathed his intellectual copyright, houses an extensive collection of his papers, shedding light on both the scientist and the man. Moreover, Einstein's philosophical ruminations on the nature of reality, determinism, and the cosmos continue to fuel debates in both scientific and philosophical circles. His famous thought experiments, like the twin paradox or the elevator in space, have become integral teaching tools, introducing students to the intricate beauty of theoretical physics. Beyond the classrooms and laboratories, Einstein's cultural impact is undeniable. From movies and plays to books and music, he remains a perennial figure, symbolizing genius, creativity, and the limitless potential of the human mind. In a world rapidly evolving, where the frontiers of science continuously expand, Einstein's journey serves as a timeless reminder. It is a testament to the spirit of inquiry the courage to challenge established norms, and the profound belief 
that the universe, in all its vastness, can be understood through the language of it. Mathematics and Reason